Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. We're in a series, Ephesians, the third chapter is our foundation scripture, and it's found, I want to share it with you this morning uh, from the message translations, and it goes something like this. Never doubt God's mighty power. What happened? God is not delayed, but man is. Uh, It says, never doubt God's mighty power. God's working inside of every single one of us. So for those of us who are following Christ, he's working inside of us, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. It's not about you. It's bigger than you. But he's got his spirit inside of you, working inside of you, to try to get your gifts to connect to your purpose so that you can be on destiny road. We talk about living your life with a bigger purpose greater than yourself. Once you as a couple, you as a family, understand what that greater purpose is and you get on destiny lane, man, I'm telling you, your life will be totally different. There will be so much joy and significance in your life that you got to get to that place. And so we've been looking at the series, there's more for you in different areas of your life. There's more in the area of your faith. Pastor Joel did a great job on that. You really want to get the one where there's more in the area of your finances. I think he did a fantastic job on that. Get that, that's online. And then I did an amazing job last week on <laughs> there was more for your fitness. I talked about how you got to be drinking the water, a gallon of water a day, all that kind of stuff. And it's just it, holistically, you got to um, increase and, and, and get stronger spiritually, mentally, and also physically. Yeah. The reason why you want to get in shape physically, I'm not talking about being a bodybuilder. I'm just talking about nurturing your, your body so that you live long on this earth so that you can empower the next generation. Our body's here for one purpose, to fulfill what God has for our lives. Right. All right, so take care of your body. Listen, I'm tired of going to hospitals and seeing cancer and kidney disease and dialysis and yeah. all it is, a little adjustment here and there. I'm talking to myself too, amen? And so um, anyways, so today we're looking at this idea on the family. God wants more for your family. And so this is the foundation scripture. Never doubt God's mighty power is working in you to accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request. What your request is, it's like, man, I got you, but I got you even more. Your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imaginations. It reminds me of Pedro. If you vote for me, I'll make your wildest dreams come true. But this is not Pedro. This is God Almighty speaking here. And he says, he will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. It's him working in you. Why do you have that desire to go and minister to those kids? Why do you have the desire to coach young people? Why do you have the desire to go and teach? God put that inside of you. And there's a gifting, and you're learning, and you're nurturing, and all of a sudden, when your giftings and your purposes come together in alignment, man, destiny is right there before you. So it's beautiful. Some of us, every single one of us, when we talk about family today, we're talking about your tribe, your own tribe in your own house, 1,100 square feet or whatever that is, 5,000 square feet, That's who's in your house, who's in your home. Also, this is a tribe right here. This is a community. This is Crossroads family, okay? So you can even extend it out there. But God has more for us, not only in your own household, but also as a family called Crossroads Church community. And man, there's so much more to do in our lives. So we look at that, but inside of every single one of us, there is, um, uh, in our gut, we know that there's more in different areas of, of our lives, Some of you guys try to shove that off and brush that away, but it just keeps coming back. It's like, man, I know that there's more in this area. I know that there's more in my marriage. I love my wife. I love my kids. I love everything, but there's more to it. You know, I know that there's more. I can't be living paycheck by paycheck. There's more to it than that. Pastor Joel came to me a year ago, maybe or so. I can't remember exactly when. He says, man, there's, there's, I don't know, man. Because I'm I'm frustrated. I'm like, again? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) <laughs> this is my life. And he says, he goes, I don't know, man, there's, there's more. He goes, I feel I'm, I'm getting bored and there's more to my life than this. And I'm like, dude, it's like, man, what the heck is, what are you made out of? I'm thinking in my head, you're writing books. You're preaching at Crossroads Church. You're traveling all over the country, preaching in other churches. You're coaching people in a network. You're taking people to expeditions. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Because I don't know, man. And I'm thinking, I'm, honestly, I love him as a friend. I love him as a, as a pastor. He's a great brother in Christ. But it's like, man, there's something. What, what's, what's he made out of? 
Well, he knows there's a longing inside of what that was. And I'm thinking, I know what, pastor this church. That'll fulfill that. Raise my kids. Yeah, then he'd be gone by now and say, so, yeah, no mas. And so, uh, um, anyways, I forgot where I was going with this story already. But what is that thing inside? You know what it is? It's a calling. It's an invitation. It's a calling by the Spirit of God. It's a, it's a calling for, it's a higher calling. That's what it is. It's, it's destiny in, a, in another level. He thought he was doing good, and he was doing good. But there was more to it than that. There's an eternal purpose. And you know what it found, wound up being? And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I just thought about this this morning. Next thing you know, the retreat center came. And man, he threw all of his energy into that and almost killed him. <laughs> but guess what, man? Now people, now people are being housed in there. People who need rest, pastors and, and missionaries who need rest are going over there and they're getting refreshed. They're getting their bounce back in their step and they're going back to do what God's called them to do. And so it's a beautiful thing how God does. So God not only does that to us, he does that for you as well. And for some of you guys, the question that comes to mind, it's like, you ever had this come into your head? It's like, man, is this all there is to life? There's got to be more. And there's that gut thing on the inside of you. There's got to be more in these areas, right? And some of us have even tried to pursue it in, in your marriage, and he's like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do, do a budget thing. We're going to go through the day rent. So you try pursuing uh, more in the area of your family, and you, come, you fight against resistance. Resistance happens. Tension happens. You're spending too much. No, you're spending too much. All of a sudden, you just start fighting, and all kinds of chaos happens. What are y'all laughing at? <laughs> but, but it happens like that. It, it, so all of a sudden, so it's like, you know what, it's, for me, like, I'm a peace guy, all right? So I'll push the limits in the house because I know that there's more in this area. And, but I don't push as hard as Natalie pushes. You know, Latina ladies get crazy. <laughs> and, and so she's challenging me in the areas of my marriage because I'm a peace person. I just, like, maintain peace. If I see her start revving up, I'm like, I'm just going to go to my studio. I'll be back. <laughs> you know? And when she's calmed down, I'll go and talk to her. And she's normal again. Anybody have a wife like that? <laughs> Look at all these hands go up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's true. And so your, your road to destiny, here's my, I guess here's my point. It doesn't come without a fight. It doesn't come without tension. It doesn't come without, you got you to have a resolve that in spite of the disappointments, Inside of the setbacks, inside of the, 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 the disasters that take place in your life, you got to press through that. Every single person who's met their destiny road, every one of them has gone through frustrations. Every one of them has, has had opportunities to quit, but they just got back up. They became an oak tree. An oak tree, all it is is a two-inch little seed. It's an acorn. You know what an oak tree really is? All it is, it's a, it's a nut that, that refuses to quit. And so you just got to become like a nut, Jeremy, right? And I'm not saying you're a nut. I'm just saying. I've seen this young man whenever he first came in. I'm telling you, man, there was stuff going on in the inside of him that nobody knew. He probably didn't know. But I've seen him just press through stuff, press through stuff. All of a sudden, you see an oak tree over here worshiping and singing and leading us into a place of God's presence. But it doesn't come without a fight is what I'm saying. You got to keep pressing through all these things in your life. You cannot quit. And a lot of times the resistance that we face, we shut down and we don't try again. So we stay stuck and we keep living paycheck to paycheck. And we keep living with this, the same spouse or you go look for another one or you keep staying in the same spouse and never uh, uh, take care of the communication situation in your home. And so resistance will come. Nothing wrong with it. But a lot of times you set your own limitations. You create your own boundaries that need to be broken through so that you can get over to the other side. The Spaniards, during Christopher Columbus's era, you know, they thought that the Spain was, was, you can't go beyond that particular land. Of course, they thought that the land, that the world was flat. But you can't go beyond Spain because if you go past this place, you know, you're going to go into a place of dangerous, um, dangerous, you know, routes. And so they actually created this coin. And this coin, it's called, um, I forgot what it is, new, new, what is it? New, new plus ultra. Knee plus ultra. I, I looked it up in the dictionary. And they had a pronunciation in, in in American. It says knee plus ultra. I'm like, that's boring, dude. That's a Latin word. Ne plus ultra. 
I don't know what that is. That's Italian. But ne plus ultra, and all that basically means is that no more beyond. And they said, you know, the pillar of Hercules was there. Ne plus ultra means no more beyond. And if you, go, if you try to go beyond this, you're in for imminent danger. And I think a lot of times we as followers of Jesus, we set these coins, we set ne plus ultra in our own mind. We have our own uh, boundaries that we set that we need to be, are meant to be broken through. These, these things that we set up in our own, they're strongholds. I call them strongholds in your mind. You're like, you've got to press through that stuff, man, because there's more beyond that. As a matter of fact, take the no off, take the knee off, and it's like plus ultra. There is, what is your plus ultra in your life? It's when you match your gifting to God's purposes and you get destiny. That's, that's your purpose. That's what you need to get a hold of. You live way beyond something for bigger and greater than yourself. Does that make sense? And so this morning what we wanted to do I told, talked to Natalie, I was like, hey, if there is one thing that you could share with the congregation on how they can experience more in their life as a family, what would that be? And she came up with this idea. I never would have even thought of it because she comes from a different perspective and angle. I grew up in a home where there was consistency. Dad and mom were together for 61 years. So when my friends would come up to me, he goes, hey, I'm not going to be here this weekend. It's like, why not, dude? I'm going to go see my, 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 my dad. It's like, what do you mean? Isn't he at the house? He says, no, he's in San Antonio. See, he left a long time ago, and I get to go spend time with him every two weeks. I'm like, I, I never even thought about that. Because in my house, he was always at home. My mom was always at home. At 5 o'clock in the afternoon, when I was outside with my friends, Miha! I knew that that man, it's dinner time. Every single day. All the time. Tortillas. When I'd wake up in the morning, I'd smell the bacon. Huevos rancheros. <laughs> I'd hear mom, que lindo esta la mañana. <laughs> and she'd sing. And it was just consistent, constant. Natalie came from a whole different dynamic. And so I'm going to ask her to come up here and let's talk about that idea. And that idea that she has is like, it's never too late. I don't care where you're at in your family dynamics. It's never too late for more. And this year, we're encouraging you that receive, be ready for more in the area of your family this year. So let's go ahead and welcome Miss Natalie to come. Now I'm just going to sit here and just hear you. Okay. And I'm going to start asking questions and stuff. Okay. Is that right? Yes. I told myself um, after the first service that I was not going to cry this time. <laughs> so I'm going to try real hard not to cry. Um, because I don't know if you've learned one thing about us, probably if you've been here more than, and if you're a visitor, thank you for coming out and being with us uh, today. Thank you for coming over to Crossroads Church. All I have to say is welcome home. But um, if you've been here for a long period of time, then you understand that Pastor Marcus and I is what you get is what you see. You know, it's too what hard. You see is what, you get. what you see is what you get. It's too hard in my life to try to be one way, one place and one way, another. That's just too complicated. So my public and private look very much the same. And so I thank you for being a part of us today. So I'm going to share some stuff um, and what that means. So when he was talking about this and, and I thought, you know what, there is still more. There is still more in our family even. We've been doing this uh, new uh, lifestyle at home. And I say lifestyle because it's not going to be just because of the fast or because it's a brand new year. But it's really something that God's been laying on our heart for a while. And we both said yes to our destiny to continue to get better in our home. So what we started to do, and you know, he, he just gave you a little glimpse of his family, right? He was home at 5 o'clock. Everybody would eat. Well, I didn't know what that looked like. You know, I had been on my own since I was 12 years old. I come from a, uh, an abandoned um, place uh, where I didn't have a, my mom and dad hey, in my life anymore. We're celebrating our 44th year. This together. March, this yeah, March. we'll be together 44 years. Isn't that crazy? 44 years. <sighs> I'm tired. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, anyway, I should have worn my shirt that said, I really, I'm uh, low maintenance. But anyway, I have a shirt that says that. But it's That's never true. too late. It's never too late to do new things in your family and never too late to just stop where you're at. You know, here we've been together forever and we've raised our children. And now we have a grandson who's 19 years old who lives in our home who is just, you know, just such a beautiful thing how God gave Hayden to us as a gift um, for us to 
try new things and be different. And so we started ordering this food that gets delivered. And the thing about it that's Talk awesome. Talk about that song. It, the it's thing, called Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. Hello yeah. Fresh. So every time you say hello, <laughs> peace, hello, love, and when my pa package comes in, I'm all hello fresh. But anyway, so what we do is we get together and we all actually get really excited to come home now early and start cutting start everything cooking. up together and cooking together and eating together. And that for me, that's that's a new thing, y'all, because before when my kids were younger, I had to run one here, run one there, run one here, soccer, blah, 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 blah. Then Pastor Marcus has always been in ministry full time. So, you know, tag, I'm it. And so we I didn't have that set in place. But now we're starting a new thing. And I absolutely love it. You're never too late for more in your life. So let me go ahead and go on with that about my story. And so in my family dynamics, I did not know what it looked like to be a wife and to be a mother. Mm -hmm. And so as I came to love the Lord and have him in my life and know him more, these circles of influence began to pop up to teach me and train me what more would look like as a family. Just and so quick, a ahead. little insight. She comes on. I stalk her. She says yes. <laughs> We're living together. He did stalk me for six months. Six months. Everywhere I went, I'm like, who is that guy? I wish I would have had Rusty back then. Where is he at? Guarding me? <laughs> Security? No, anyway, go ahead. I forgot what I was going to say. But <laughs> the, the point is, when she came on, you know, to trust, we started with mistrust. And the dynamics in her home, I didn't know anything about. So all of a sudden, here we, are, here we are at where we are at today because Natalie had to overcome the fear of opening herself up to people again just so, so they can get into this certain area in her life. So you have to understand, it, it, didn't, it didn't register in my brain. So the first one that she allowed to open up her heart was me. And knowing that I'm a human, I broke that trust, you know, a few times by doing stupid stuff or whatever, you know, things like that. So we just, so all our life we've had to build, 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 and we're at this place, but it's never too late. You can start whenever. Yes, amen. And so she had whenever. to identify at first who was in her family circle. Exactly. So that's where you're at. So here's where I'm at. Yeah, I had to identify who my family circle was, and let me go ahead and uh, refer to this right here. So the red, really, for me at that particular time is the blood of Jesus. That's God. He's center of my life and our life. And so here we were, husband and wife, and we had th the little three dots or were my three kids, you know, at the time they were under 18 years old. And so there they were in my life and in my heart. And even, you know, I've, I've had to ask my kids for forgiveness as well, because I was so fearful of people hurting me that and it's sad for me to say this, but it's true, and my kids have gone through counseling and we've talked about it, is I didn't want it, once they started getting at a talking age where they could talk back to me or tell me mean things, I began to guard myself even from my own children. I was scared to love them hard because one day they would leave me or hurt me. And that's a sad place to live. And so God began to bring these mentors, these women in my life to teach me what it was like to go through hurt and still love. So the next part, um, if you can go ahead and get to the next slide. So that was Natalie's family circle, me, Marcus, and my kids. Then I began to have relationships with close friends. And where did I find these close friends? For me, the safe place for me was church at that time. And since I didn't have a mom, didn't have a dad, blah -dee blah I began looking for these people in my life who became like grandparents to my children. Mm -hmm. And um, for a long time, my daughter, Bianca, who's 34 now, we had a family in our life, and she called them Mima and Peepa. And of course, we never showed, our kids didn't know color or not. They didn't know they were white and we're Hispanic. You know, <laughs> they're just like Mima and Peepa. She grew up with them until it was, she was a teenager, and she finally realized that they were not her real grandma. And grandpa, she's like, what? Me, mom, people aren't our real grandma. I'm like, no, they've just been your church grandma and grandpa. It's like, girl, you you're know? Mexican. Those guys are white people. <laughs> <laughs> we had to teach her. No. <laughs> so anyway, um, 
So they became part of my family, part of my circle. They moved in with my adult children in that second layer. If you'll look, there's a second layer there, and it tells where your adult children. Hey, something's wrong with you if... I don't try to be mean, but something is wrong with you. If like everyone is in your circle all crammed in and they're like 40 years old and 50 years old and so, and they're still in your circle, it's like, yeah, but you know, there's, there's a place for them and not everybody can squeeze into that circle and maybe Some that's Some people don't belong it. into, in that circle is that's what you're right. saying, right? Exactly. And yeah. even, even our kids, when they were growing up, we were raising them, nurturing them. Mm -hmm. They were in that place. But as soon as they became 18 of age, they, we always told them, I said, hey, I love you, but she was here before you were here. Don't be talking to my wife that way. And so that's until so all of a sudden they realized, they started calling me, hey, your husband. Yeah they, yeah, they still do. They're like, I was just talking to your husband a minute ago. I'm like, your dad? But um, that's where they got that from because he had the little talk with them. And he's like, one day you're going to grow up and you're going to leave my house, but she's going to be with me forever. And if and she leaves, I'm following her. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Anyway, so in that second circle, we had close friends that became like family to us, uh, church families, and then our adult children. And then um, you'll see the third circle here will say relatives and mentors. I will have to say this for some of you. Maybe this was your, not your story, but it's mine. For 28 years, I was distant from my relatives, my brothers, and um and we didn't get together until my mom died in 2015. And my brothers asked me, why, sis, why did you separate yourself from us? And I told them, I was like, I had to get healthy. I couldn't give you what I didn't have at that point in That's my good. life. And they were not healthy individuals. They were doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And they wouldn't have heard me even if I screamed at the top of my lungs because they weren't ready. Sometimes your relatives that are in that outer circle, it's okay for them to be there because they've not yet learned the healing and the, and the hope that you have in your life. And sometimes they kind of have to sit on that outside circle. Is that making sense to y'all? Hope y'all don't think I'm like an ice queen or anything like that because my brothers came into our life. We all got back together again when mom passed away in 2015 and we've had an incredible relationship because now is the time because there is more, right? And so then um, the last layer that we had here or that I had here was my church community. That means I don't know every single one of y'all how I do in my second layer. Maybe we just see each other here at church and that's awesome, but we're still community and we're still together and we're in a healthy place all one with another. And then um, coworkers, I have coworkers that have jumped in and out of my life throughout those circles. I have coworkers that are now in that second layer in my life over time that I've known for 20 something years that we've been, been beyond just working together. We're friends, we're family, they love the Lord, I love the Lord. So I guess what I'm really trying to say to y'all in all of this is that, you know, one of the things that was very hard for my family to understand was why did, how could you do that? How could you cut us off? So let me talk about Jesus right here. And I'll tell you that um, I took a cue out of his book. If we look at Mark 3, 31 through 33, Jesus said this, then Jesus' mothers and his brothers came and stood outside and sent a message to him, asking that he'd come out and speak with them. When the crowd sitting around Jesus heard this, they spoke up and said to him, Jesus, your mother and brothers are looking outside for you. And he answered them. And he said, who is my true mother and my true brothers? He asked the crowd. Then looking in their eyes, I love Jesus. He's so cool, y'all. I love him. I could just see him going like, let me tell you something right now. Anyway, then looking in the eyes of those who are sitting in a circle around him, he said, here are my true family members. For whoever does the will of God is Amen. my brother, my sister, and my mother. So if you're trying to figure out who these healthy individuals are in your circle, just think about that. Those who do the will of your father, the, of your father, sometimes are in that circle even before your relatives. And, and at times it'll switch. I'm some sorry? people need to move out. Yeah, some people need to get out of those circles. But uh, now using that scripture, I want to talk about this just for one quick second. You see all these small group boards that we have around here. We're not just doing it to have something new to do. Um, 
but we're doing it because we want to provide you with the opportunity to sign up and find your circle of influence, of your people. Who may, who you, my brother was here earlier. He's been four years uh, sober of alcoholism, and um, it all started that journey. Yeah, clap for him. He's not here, but I tell you what, I'm so proud of him. And um, anyway, it, the journey started in 2015 when mom passed. And so we have a, a, a Celebrate Recovery class here that is for uh, habits, hang-ups, and something else. I don't know. It's Hobos. All, Hobos. Oh, hurts. It's hurts. It's, hurts. It's, it's, so it's not just because you're strung up on drugs. It's maybe you have church hurt or family hurt or whatever kind of hurt. So that's what that group's about. Then I have a group called Heart to Heart for gals of the ages 20 through 30s who are young moms or want to be moms. And they want to know what that circle looks like. I want to help pass on what's been passed on to me. But there are so many community groups. Mm -hmm. Just check it out before you leave today. I think the groups will be open one more weekend for you to sign up. And I encourage you to do what Jesus did. He was sitting in a circle when he talked to everybody and said, hey, this is what life is like. So um, I have a quote. Um, Joel always says this quote, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasures you need in that same area that he's read that. And um, I, what's that guy's name? His last name is Roar. Richard Roar. Richard Roar. There is another um, uh, a sentence, a couple of uh, sentences above that, and it says this. In loving the spiritual, you cannot despise the earthly. In loving the spiritual, you cannot despise the earthly. My husband says it like this. Be careful that you don't get so heavenly minded that you're not any earthly good in making your decisions, right? So as I became more connected spiritually, I was able to make better choices on earth for my life. Does that make sense? And then the second portion um, was that I had to overcome the fear of people who hurt me. I had to overcome that and understand that there's going to be more people that are going to come and hurt me. But you know what? I can't let that allow me from fulfilling what you just said earlier, pursuing the destiny God has for me. So that's where the second part, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. Finally, walking through that cave of hurt, that cave of rejection, abandonment, all those things led me to a place where I'm like, there is treasure. There's not only pain. There's people on the other side of pain, yeah. and that's what I want to be connected to. And so the last final point that I have for you is um, that there's more. There's more for you. There's more for you and your family. So many of you who are in here have become family to us. There's Cindy sitting there, and I call her Marcus's twin sister. <laughs> who? We've no Cindy Contreras. Oh, my God. We've known each other forever. Joel has been in our lives since he was 20 years old, and all those stories that he talks about, they're true, y'all, because I remember him coming in our living room, and we would try to be very empathetic to him, but really deep down, we wanted to crack up because it was like, oh, here he comes with another Southwest Airlines story. I wonder who did him wrong today, you know? So when he shares those stories, I bust out laughing because I, I was there real time when some of that happened, and it's hilarious to me, but him and Emily, they have become... Man, sometimes more Powerhouses. kids to me than my own kids, which is crazy. Um, I love my kids, but right now they're in our life, and they're giving to us in a way that's super special uh, for Marcus and I to experience. Yeah. And so um, anyway, bottom line is, who's in your family circle? Mm -hmm. Who's in that circle? Know who's in your circle. And you may have to do some cleaning out and uh, get rid of some of those uh, on the outer circle. So thank you for letting me share. Love you. <laughs> Listen, um, I never would have thought to talk about that angle. She talked about it because she's lived it. And it never stops. It keeps going. We're, we want more for our family as well. But we know in order for us to pursue all that God has for us, there are people that will have to move out of our current circle now because God's bringing someone else in to make room for someone else. So that's why it's very important this week to look at your life and just say, hey, who's in my family circle? Answer that truthfully and honestly. As a matter of fact, you don't want to miss next month because we're going to be talking about the elephant in the family room. And we're going to talk about some of those boundaries. Pastor Joel's got a couple of messages that are lined up that specifically speak 
to this. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be fantastic. This Wednesday is night of worship. Night of worship, there's a lot of people that are fasting here, okay? And there's a lot of people missing because they're fasting. And uh, it's okay, but some of them are hungry, and they're like, man, I can't, you know, I'm peeing all the time or whatever's going on. But we're going to break our fast on night of worship. So if you know how to cook, bring any kind of food. It doesn't matter. Bring all the food from your house to Wednesday night because we're going to eat it all up. And we're going to break our fast. Oh, we have, we actually made, we're, we're making Ni Plus Ultra cookies. There's actually a cookie that's named after that. And so we're going to eat those things, a lot of them. <laughs> and so we'll send you a, a recipe. But um, Wednesday also, there's a, man, there's another powerful story that's going to be, we're going to be sharing. We have a gal here who is in our church, Rachel, who's actually Rick's, Natalie's brother's Rick's girlfriend. She was diagnosed with cancer. She should have been dead years ago. A nine-pound tumor weighed 300 pounds. But God supernaturally did a work. You know, you know what he actually did? you got to come Wednesday to find out. She's going to be sharing her story, and we're going to be celebrating God with her. But it's going to be awesome. I've got some stuff that I want to share, but that was enough. Who's in your circle? Get them out without fear. You have to bust. you got to allow the outer casing of your life, the fears, those things that are hanging you up. Just press through that dirt. You know, whenever you're, the seed is under that ground, it's like, I'm suffocating. Why is all this dirt here? But if they're willing to push through and allow the, 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 the raw materials that God put inside of them, if they press through, all of a sudden it'll sprout. And it'll be so beautiful. All of a sudden you'll see the sun. It's a whole other side. Next thing you know, he'll build inner strength inside of you. You become this massive oak tree. You got birds living under you. You got people peeing on you. You got all this kind of stuff that's it's beautiful. Well, maybe not that part. I don't even know why I said that. But they're using, you're being used to further purposes. We, we need to erase that part. What am I thinking? All right, let's all stand. Father. You are so good to us. Man, we celebrate with the baptisms. God, we celebrate this, this young man, Anthony, who gave his life to you. What an amazing moment. And we also celebrate, Father God, that you've given us an opportunity this year. We, we set the course uh, to press through the barriers that a lot of times we've put in our lives. There's stuff that other people have put there. But we're going to press on through because there's more for us in every aspect of our life. So we just commit us, our lives to you, our heart to you, our families to you. We just ask that you would just use us for your glory as a family unit here at Crossroads. And let's continue, Lord God, to make it hard for people to go to hell. Lord God, give us wisdom, give us ideas, give us creativity so we can reach every person around this whole regional area. We trust you and commit all that to you in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said amen. amen. We love you guys. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Sunday. See you Wednesday. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.